What is going on ladies and gentlemen and I have one hell of a build for you guys today. If you're like me and you're absolutely tired of the Meta Slave build, you guys know what I'm talking about. Marslix, Vate Strand, Ice Staff, Master's Dual Wield, that is old news. This build is a Horcrux classic, very unique, you're not going to see this anywhere on YouTube and it absolutely slaps. <laughs> So if you are looking for an off-meta Dragonite PvP build to carry you through Cyrodiil, well listen up because this video is 100% for you. Let's get into it. Alright ladies and gentlemen, before we hop into the actual build itself, please consider giving the channel a like and sub if you enjoy the contents. I am live all the time, both on YouTube as well as Twitch down in the description the, the little towel section down there yeah, it has all my socials just go click on it go hit the follow button i'll give you shout outs in all my videos it's a win-win so character sheet we're going to quickly go over this and then we're also going to hop over into the the gameplay i'm gonna have the gameplay reeling at the same time i'm covering the build i'm based on the analytics that is the type of format that you guys enjoy the most as most viewer retention so i'm gonna put it to that format if you have any critiques on the format let me know and uh, i will consider it so this is a mag dk despite us having a lot more stamina recovery right so uh, there's a reason for this so here's all the basic stats we got 24 in the health 40 in the magic the only reason i'm doing this is to hit the 30k health um threshold that i always run on all my builds so as long as you hit that 30k health threshold, I don't care how you do it, just hit the 30k and pop the rest of your points into Magicka. We have to have a high magic pool for this because one of the sets that we are running is actually based off of that. So our spell critical chance will go up to around 25%. Assuming you run the Alliance Battle Drought Potions, there are two different ways of running this. If you're running into sustain issues, that is the build I'm going to show you first because this is what is based off of in the clips and what I had the most success with. But if you want to optimize this, you will be changing out your potions as well as one of the abilities on your bar. So here's everything semi buffed. Again, we're not considering continuous attack in Cyrodiil. Our spell resistances aren't at that 30k. That's because I'm actually running dual wield on the back bar. We're going to be doing a Nernhone powered combo instead of running defending. So that's why the resistances are a little low. Spell penetration is a little low, but we're going to make up for that with just raw damage and raw damage amplification, which I will explain here in a moment. Our weapon damage does get up to around 5,500 in serial, fully buffed with continuous attack. For our race, we are at Khajiit. This is not the best race by no means. This is probably one of the worst races you can run for this because we're not really re relying on our crit damage whatsoever. All right, or neither are we relying on our crit healing. Um, I think you will want to run something along the lines of um, a Dark Elf, an Imperial. You can even do Nord, Orc. I mean, you can literally do anything. Khajiit's uh, just kind of mid, okay? Uh, again, the Mundus is going to be the Serpents. We need more stamina recovery than we do mag recovery just because our stamina abilities just, just, just tend to cost more. And that's just, just how it works out, how it has it set up. Maybe you can manage your sustain better, but uh, I feel that you are spamming stamina abilities way more than Magicka, so therefore we need more recovery to compensate. And as always, Vampire Stage 3, it's hard to not run Van 3. All right, so we're hopping into the gameplay and the sets that we are running. I wasn't kidding when I said this was a Horcrux special. This is something you're never going to see anywhere on YouTube, and it can actually be optimized further. I just need to farm one of the other sets. And if I come out with an amendum to this video, I will update you guys in a future community post. And more than likely, when Necron drops on the 20th, um, a lot of things are going to change. But Again, if you're looking for a nice off-meta build to run, which is really successful. And I also might add, I had more success running this in four hours streaming than I did an entire week of running the quote-unquote meta Marslex Vate Shran Master Dual Wheel. So maybe it's even better in some regards. So the very first set we're running is Draugrkin Inferno Staff. We are running Charge on this because, yes, we are running Crushing Shock as our spammable. Yes, we're running Crushing Shock on a dragonite this is a destro inferno staff dual will build which uh it, it seems ridiculous but trust me guys it absolutely slaps we're running the double dot poisons on this 
So if you're unfamiliar with what Draugr can does, uh, this is only on our front bar, by the way. It's going to give you max magic, offensive penetration, mag recovery, and it's going to increase all of your damage done by 322. This is actually 330 if you have everything golden out, but it reduces your thing by 10%, which uh, really doesn't matter to us because since we are only running this on the front bar, that 10% healing mitigation really doesn't affect us at all because all of our heals are on the back bar. So therefore you do not get that 10% debuff. Back bar, we are running the Black Rose Perfected Swords. Yes, this is a new set that I'm going to start introducing on my builds because it is actually very, very strong and pay very close attention to the enchantments. These are a necessity and I will explain why here in just a moment. We're running Poison enchantments on the main hand nerned hone nerned hone on your main hand technically gives you slightly more healing power than actually running powered which is our offhand the reason for that is that it amplifies our weapon spell damage to a point to where it it's just better than power with the 4.5 percent it's more like five percent extra healing on your back bar when you run nerned hone and for our backup we are running a stamina absorb enchantment and i will explain that uh literally right now so Taking a look at the bar setup, I'm going to cut away from the PvP reels in the background, assuming that I've even got enough footage up to this point. So one of the skills we're running is Quick Cloak. So Black Rose Perfected Duel, you don't need the Perfected one. The Perfected one only gives you the stamina recovery. So activating Blade Cloak while in combat allows you to gain Spectral Cloak whenever Blade Cloak deals damage for two seconds, reducing the damage taken and increasing your damage done by six percent this is really really strong so essentially everyone you hit with your blade cloak which kind of turns it into spectral cloak they are doing six percent less damage to you and you're also doing six percent more damage to them which is a 12 percent damage swing in your favor and this is really really strong as well i did not know this until the other day i've played this game for nine years and had no clue that this interaction existed in eso by running these enchantments blade cloak on almost every single tick will apply the status effects so for example you see on the ogrim here that it's applying the poison status effect as well as the minor breach from the absorbed stamina enchantment and this does it on cooldown like clockwork and the reason this is so strong we don't have access to minor breach on the build the absorbed stamina enchantment is going to allow you to do essentially five percent more damage to whoever you're focusing and the poison damage the reason that is so good is that you have the combustion passive right so the combustion passive it's on a three second cooldown whenever you apply the burning status effect or the poison status effect you restore 1000 magicka or 1000 stamina respectively and because we have blade cloak up at all times you are constantly applying the poison status effect literally every single three seconds so this ability even though it only costs 2500 stamina it's effectively restoring almost 10,000 stamina over its duration so it's an amazing and amazing ability an amazing combo and i'm gonna start experimenting with this going forward with other enchantments and you know just to make sure you have all of the status effects that you can possibly have on this build this will work better on other classes the dragonite does not have anything in the kids that is going to help bolster status effects unlike the arcanist or magden or, or necromancer okay so this build will technically work better on other classes but the reason it works good on dragonite is that you have some hellacious dot pressure already built into the class so it just coincides very well and if you're asking yourself why we are running inferno staff over a lightning staff because inferno st staffs increase the damage done with your damage over time effects and also your status effects by 12 percent for example when you have the burning status effect when it applies the burning status effect itself does 12 percent more damage and because the burning status effect is also a dot it also does 12 percent more damage and usually when you look at your combat metrics if you haven't downloaded combat metrics it is a very helpful add-on that allows you to see where your damage is coming from what damage is being done to you what heal you what your healing is looking like what your opponent's healing is look like and it also helps you kind of break down what your opponent builds is kind of gives you like a little sneak peek onto what they may or may not be running and and this build is also really fun because this build doesn't show up in any combat metrics once we finish going over the, the rest of the sets because the sets that we are using are just amplifying the skills that we already have intrinsically on the kits not actually procking any extra damage so if your opponent is trying to figure out what you are running trying to use combat metrics they're not really going to be able to figure it out 
And to be honest, guys, the shock factor alone from seeing a Dragonite spamming crushing shock, like, like if you die to that, you can't talk crap. Like, you just died to a Dragonite spamming crushing shock, okay? So, uh, <laughs> anyway, let's, let's finish going over the rest of the build. Next, we are running a One Piece Magna Incarnate Medium uh, on the body, well fitted. This is just to give us our extra recoveries. The next set we are running is Dragon's Appetite. So since this is a very dot heavy build and we have many instances of damage over time, Dragon's Appetite just brings it all together. So Dragon's Appetite is going to give you weapon spell damage, recovery, recovery, and then the five piece increases all your non-bleeding damage done to bleeding enemies by 220, very similar to Draugrkin. And upon hitting 10 stacks of Dragon's Appetite, you're going to get a burst steal for around 10k. And yes, this can also crit. On all of our armor pieces, we are running the, the Triglyphs. That's just the best way to get the most bang for your buck. We are in 3 Heavy, 3 Light, and 1 Medium. And when it comes to our jewelry, we are running everything Infuse, Weapon and Spell Damage. And our last set is Ring of the Pale Order. And I'm going to take just a moment to kind of explain why this is so good so ring of the pale order um this is you know, the solo you know the one bx's dream of a mythic essentially is going to give you 20 percent life steal on literally everything that you do well i say everything but, but it's not really technically everything um status effects the damage that you do from status effects does not heal you and also if you're using any proc sex like a uh, marsh looks or way of fire or selenes or, or, or whatever this technically cannot heal you from that, even though the tooltip says any damage that you do will heal you, that's not necessarily true. And before I hop over into the skills, if you made it to this portion of the video, I have a little, a little special for you guys. So I did go ahead and download the Superstar add-on. So if you want to take a quick screenshot of what the build, uh, what the rest of the build is going to consist of and what we have already covered, it is up on your screen right here right now just so like i said you can screenshot save it for later because i know in build videos it's very annoying going back and trying to listen to you you know someone over and over and over you know and sometimes i do miss some details i get excited and i forget to cover everything so this should have everything listed out for you guys i'm going to do this going forward i think it's really helpful Okay, so let's hop into the skills. Now, there is a plethora of different ways you can build this out depending on whether you're in a group, whether you're in battlegrounds, whether you are solo. You know, if you're not solo, don't run Pink Ring of the Pale Order. You can run something like Malakanth or Sea Serpent's Coil. Uh, there's a flex spot on the bar. We'll get to it. I'm running Molten Whip currently, but you can change this out for all kinds of different abilities depending on what your, what your situation is, right? Anyway, so... Noxious Breath is quintessential. You kind of need this. This is going to be your source of major breach. It does a lot of poison damage in AoE. The more AoE you know, pressure we have, the more dot pressure we have, the more we are going to heal from Ring of the Pell Order. And it does poison damage. And you guys know it can proc the poison status effect, which procs combustion, which restores a thousand stamina. Shattering Rocks are uh, really nice. Uh, every time you use Shattering Rocks, you're going to get a thousand stamina back. So kind of keep that in mind. If you are low on your stem pool, it's going to get to give you a nice heal and it can also crit. And I prefer this over Fossilized uh, just for the heal primarily. Burning Embers um, is always going to apply the Burning Stats effect on initial hit. And there's never not going to be a moment you're not going to have Burning Up anyway. I'm just throwing that out there because this does the initial hit and then also does the initial hit of the Burning Stats effect, which is pretty nice. It's going to heal you for 100% of the damage done. Crushing Shock, uh, this is like the bread and butter. This does all the status effects. So um, the synergy with Dragon's Appetite and Draugrkin, all of your status effects uh, that this applies, uh, they do initial hits of damage. So we'll see here, uh, we use Crushing Shock. I uh, want to we'll do three pops there. Uh, we'll check CMX uh, really quick. And you can see, you know, Chill Burn can cause status effect. All this is, go is, is going to hit. So Draugrkin and dragon's appetite actually bolsters this damage each and every single time it applies so it's like it's like having additional dots on your build that that's why this setup like this synergy is so so strong and it, it works on pretty much any class uh, the dragonite doesn't have any passives that amplify uh dot damage really or it doesn't amplify stats effect damage like the arcanist you run this on the arcanist you're going to slap kids like so um is really really good uh, it's going to apply a vulnerability that's you know of uh, a minor vulnerability that's five percent extra damage all the time the burning stats effect hits for for a truck and you're also going to have the chilled stats effect of brittle increasing your critical damage by 10 percent on whoever you're attacking and you and you combine that with you know blade cloak which is also going to give you you know a minor breach pretty much the entire time and it's also 
going to uh to apply you know whatever enchantments that you have here you know poison damage all the time and also the absorb stamina enchantment again is going to give you minor breach which is also five percent increased damage so it's really really strong now the flex spots you can run whatever you want here molten whip is really good because it does give you a little bit more burst and also gives you the 300 weapon spell damage pretty much for the duration but you don't have to run molten whip okay you absolutely do not and this is also going to influence what potions you're also going to run if you are running Molten Whip, I highly suggest that you use the Alliance Battle Drought Pots. Um, the reason you want to use the Battle Drought, drought Pots and not the um, Spell Drought Pots is because the Dragonite innately has access to Minor Brutality. So you don't want to run something that's going to give you Major Sorcery when you have Minor Brutality. Ideally, you want to stack Minor and Major Brutality, so you have to run the Alliance Battle Drought Potions. So, in so doing, it's going to also give you your crit chance, which you need. It's going to give you your major endurance, increasing your stand recovery, which you desperately need. And again, it's going to give you major brutality. If you are running into sustain issues, you can compensate for that a plethora of ways. You can change the serpent to, you know, whatever. Um, you can run uh, some cost reductions, okay? Um, just, just however you want to do it. Again, we are Khajiit. This is definitely not the best race for the class. If you want to run this build or something very similar to Mag DK, I would highly suggest that you more more than like I, I do think Breton's going to be um, the best option for you unless you know you're, you're like me you like to hybridize and go between magic and stamina then Dark Elf would be the best. But since we're running be with Sugar Skulls, you really don't need the Dark Elf passive. So if you really want to go balls to walls in this, um, go with the the Breton. I think that will pretty much fix any sustain issues uh, that you're going to have and some other. Um, noteworthy abilities you can run you're running blo uh, elemental blockade uh, this you may think this is a meme uh, this is not a meme the reason this is really strong is because blockade of fire ticks every one second so essentially it is getting doubly th the effectiveness of dragon's appetite as well as drawkerkin so anything any dots you have ticking every one second is, is really going to benefit from this and it's also going to increase um the damage on the ability to burn your enemies by 10 percent which everyone's always you know burning right so this is really good for battlegrounds because everyone's pretty much like stockpiled anyway, right? They're all going to be in like one congested AOE area. So throw this down. This is probably going to be your hardest hitting ability of uh, literally everything. Like this is what's going to generate the most damage. Um, alternatively, if you wanted to run uh, different potions, again, I'm going to spend a lot of time on this flex spot because this really opens up a lot of build uh, variability. If you want to run uh, degeneration, for example, um that that is going to be your source of major, major brutality this is also a dot so it's really going to benefit from uh, appetite and drogergan and this opens up uh, a slot if you don't want to run pale order you can run something like malacanth or sea serpent's coral which is going to effectively bolster your damage by you know 15 percent since we're running a really low crit chance anyway if you don't run the battle drop potions the battle drop potions are going to push you up to 26.9 percent a weapon crit if you don't choose to run those you're going to be stuck at 14.4 in my opinion, at that point, you should just amplify your base damage with uh, Malakanth instead of Ring of the Pill Order. Um, so that's also an option for you, right? And then that will free up um, because you have Entropy, your Major Brutality on the front bar, and you don't care about crit. And now you can either run the really expensive Heroism Potions, which I, I absolutely swear by, okay? Or you can run uh, just your 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 basic Tri-Stat Potions. Uh, it, it's entirely up to you uh, what you want to run here. And alternatively, if you just want to, if you just want crit on the front bar, you can run Flames of Oblivion, and that's also going to free up uh, some different potions that you can possibly run to throw in this. But yeah, so this last flex spot is really great, depending on your situation, depending on your party members, and just really depending how you want to run the build. Now, ultimate on the front bar is Ferocious Leap. Uh, again, we're using this as our execute since we do not have an execute on this class. Um, it is actually advantageous in hindsight to run. Uh, on your weapon and spell damage, uh, excuse me, on your uh, your your traits for your jewelry, I think it would be more advantageous to run Bloodthirsty in the long run. Uh, again, that's entirely up to you. At the point of making this video, this is the second day of me recording this video because I think come up yesterday. Um, in hindsight, I do think Bloodthirsty will be a better option for your jewelry um, because you don't really have uh, you don't really have an execute, so you need that damage when people get low to be able to finish off the kills, and Bloodthirsty will compensate for that. Now. Again, Quick Cloak, which morphs into Spectral Cloak, why you have Black Rose Prison active is an absolutely an amazing ability. It's, all, it's going to give you Major Evasion, which, you know, you're reducing damage from AoE attacks. That's a lot of things. That's Marsalix, that's Dawnbreakers, that's Meteors, that, that you know, any Cleave. This is an amazing buff just to have in general. And it's also going to give you uh, 
your, your, your expedition, which the Dragonite lacks, you don't really have a lot of mobility on this. So if you need to chase down people, you will have uh, expedition uh, on this as well for four seconds when you cast it. And the damage actually does do a lot of damage and this has a chance to apply the status effects as well. And if you run Ring Capel Order, since it is an AOE dot hitting ability, you're actually going to heal quite substantially from this. And again, the reason we're running this is because Black Rose Prison Duel Up is awesome. I absolutely love this, right? Uh, next, oh crap button, a coagulating blood. Don't be spamming this if you don't have to. Resolving Vigor is your healing over time. Try to keep this up like every five seconds. Apply it just like a very short buff like the Necromancer. Volatile Armor, again, this is going to deal dot damage. So any more dot damage we can have our opponents are better because Appetite and Draugr Gun is going to further bolster that. And then we have Blood Craze. This is simply just to apply the bleed effect to your enemies just so you can get the stacks of dragon's appetite and it's also going to heal you each and every single time this does damage you don't have to have masters do well i just slap this on uh, primarily just for dragon's appetite now the ultimate on the back bar this is probably one of the most op ultimates in the game to be honest with you guys it, it's very slept on and this is your defensive slash offensive ult driving chaos is incredible this is going to afflict everyone bleed damage so if you're doing dot damage to a huge aoe and i'll just show you guys the aoe on this it is a 180 cone in front of you and the this the distance this hits people is just incredible um the reason this is so strong uh for one it goes really well with the build and all the dot damage and dot pressure um, that we have but also each enemy hit with this is going to increase your damage by six percent up to a maximum 36 percent this is effectively like a pseudo corrosive armor it's going to increase all the damage that you're doing by an additional 36 percent and it's also going to heal you for 53 percent of the damage done in addition to pale order which is going to heal you for 20 percent of the damage done so you can see the synergy here right this is when you hit when you pop this when you're in a sticky situation if you have four or five people on you just toss this out casually you don't have to time it with any burst combination or any rotation or anything this is going to allow you to survive for the next eight seconds the burst seal from this is absolutely amazing i have so many clips saved to where i'm literally tanking 10 or 15 people at a time so while you have this effect up on them you're constantly every two seconds getting like 15k burst seals between ring pill order and thriving chaos and it is amazing again it applies to bleed sass effects everyone so dragon's appetite is going to go hog wild when you have a bunch of aoe dot pressure like noxious breath or quick cloak or um, volatile armor you're going to generate those stacks very very quickly all right so hopping over into the champion points the first champion point we are uh, i want to talk about really quick because it's still bugged because zoss spaghetti code they don't know they don't know what they're doing okay cleanse revival is still bugged right but it's bugged in a different way you can get this clean uh this heal without being below 25 percent health if you even look at anyone that is below 25% health, whether it be an NPC, a player, a mud crab, it doesn't matter. You're going to get cleansed. I know. Like, how how does that even work? I I, I don't know how you mess that up. I, I, I don't know. But this is a free purge for your build. And since a lot of people are running war chiefs and a lot of people are running snakes in the stars, snakes in the stars will absolutely destroy you if you're running ring of pill order because each and every single little itty bitty tick of pill order is going to hit you for straight oblivion damage when you get star venom on you. So having cleansing or revival to get rid of that uh, can be really clutch sometimes, okay? But that's why I have there, you kind of need a purge and this is the cheapest, most effective way to get it. So master at arms, um, anytime a stats effect hits, it counts as direct damage plus most of our abilities are Drake damage as well, you know, crushing shock spam, uh, leap, you know, the initial hits of Noxious Breath, Burning Embers, Rending Slashes. So Master Arms is there. The other aim is for our ongoing dot pressure, single target uh, damage as well. And then Ironclad is going to be our CP that we use to mitigate the most incoming damage. Now hopping over into the Red Tree, I wouldn't change this all too much. So Fortify, Sustain by Suffering, Pain's Refuge, Survival Instincts are usually the, uh, the Quafecta that I normally go with. And these are just good all the time, and they really help out the build in literally any situation. Green Chi really doesn't matter. Uh, if you are going to run the expensive heroism potions, run uh, Liquid Efficiency for obvious reasons. War Mount, Gift of Rider, and Steed's Blessing. All right, guys, that was an absolute mouthful. I really hope you appreciate the build. It is very off meta. It's a Horcrux special. It slaps and duels. It, it, it's really, really fun to run. And then when you kill people with this, they're stuck staring at their death recap. Like, what the hell? What the hell is going on? But uh, if you enjoyed the video and if you make this part of the video, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate like and sub. Don't forget to go follow me on Twitch. I do stream over there uh, like four or five times a week. Uh, the streams are pretty cool. We do a little bit of everything. 
do Halo Infinite, uh, we do Dota, we do Apex. Uh, it's a pretty much a variety stream, but most of the time I'm streaming ESO. So uh, yeah, uh, come by and check it out. It's cool. And as always, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons as well as my YouTube members. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I appreciate each and every single one of you. All right, that's all I really had to say. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.